Hey, what's going on? Tony here from LearnAutoBodyAndPaint.com. And if you want to see how we turn this dingy, crappy looking CRV into an awesome little project like this, stay tuned. Diamond Head. Beautiful day. Things like this you can get on eBay for like 30 to 40 bucks you can get a whole new set but we ended up just plasti dipping them so we cleaned them sprayed them with plasti dip and they came out pretty good So we had Mr. Danny Boy help us out. He's from the Big Island. Uh, all we're doing here is scuffing all of our dent areas with 80 grit. So you can get one of these eraser wheels on Amazon or anywhere online. <laughs> When mixing body filler, you're gonna usually put about eight to 10 drops of hardener for every golf ball size of body filler. What I like to do is usually tackle the edges and then use the DA, uh, let the machine do the work, go flat, hold it flat, and then once it gets to a certain point, like back off and then feel it with your hand. A lot of people, they sand so much, they sand it too much and they basically take off all the filler they put on. The best way to learn to feel for high and low spots is to keep your hands, like don't put gloves on, right? Keep your hands dusty and just close your eyes and feel over the dent, okay? If you feel like there's a dip, you would feel it. If you feel the, you know, you'll just, you have to train your hands and feel, okay? And if it feels flat, then you know you're good. So another thing is when doing body work, you might have to lay two, three, or even four coats of body filler to get it perfect, all right? Because sometimes the first coat is not enough. You know, you gotta lay a second coat. And then after the second coat, you discover a few other areas around the car that you gotta do. And then you're, you might go back to your uh, spot that you thought that was done and just put in a little extra filler over a couple of uh, chips or little low spots, you know what I mean? Just take your time and go over it. So we had a new guy come in and he wanted to help out. He was priming some other car outside. And he was like, hey, I'll, I'll help you prime your car up. So we just mixed it. He used this, his same gun. He was using a 1.4 tip on a cheap gun. I told him, hey, let me, let's just use my Atom X20 with a 1.8. Uh, the primer would come out a lot faster. You know, he's like, no, nah, no, nah, let's just use my gun. So we use, this is why the primer is not coming out. I would have done it differently. Um, I would have put a 2.0, 1.8 to 2.0 tip. Uh, so the primer, the thick primer would spray in a lot more even.
couple of spots that I had to glaze. Here, we're just gonna flatten all this out. Some areas, the primer went on too thick, it cracked it. Okay, that's fine. We're gonna sand that out here. Shirt hit it while you, we were priming the roof. All this can be fixed, right? Because this is only the 2K primer stage. The goal is to cut this type of texture off and make it look like this. Okay, and then what we're gonna do now is dry sand it with 400 grit. After that, we're gonna wet sand it down and uh, clean it up and it'll be ready for paint. But uh, when we wet sand, we're gonna clean this up all in here, okay? We wanna take all that down and make it look like this. All right, when you're tacking, you don't want to push hard, you want to push lightly, okay? Just kind of grab, just scuff the surface, you know? It, clean it, go over the whole car, make sure the dust is off. Before this, of course, you want to blow it down. We already did that. Uh, and then just go over it to take the, the lint off, okay? The, the, the light dust and the lint. Once we do that, that's it, okay? There's no tacking in between coats of single stage because it's tacky, it's sticky, right? They're just gonna do a one-time tack Put two heavy coats on it, two to three, you know, medium heavy coats on it, and you're pretty much done. All right, so this is the Shopline acrylic enamel paint system here, direct gloss, 411 mixing ratio. Now the paint rep told me, hey, you don't even have to put hardener in this thing. You could just mix it four to one with reducer. But I was like, I mean, don't you need hardener? He's like, yeah, you can put hardener. I'm like, yeah, of course I want to put hardener. So make sure you always get some sort of hardener activator for if you're spraying with enamels because that just makes your enamel dry a lot harder. When I learned how to paint, I used to just watch my dad paint. Okay, super important, just watching. Basically the paint pattern, you know, where you start. So. Normally, you always start on the top of the roof, okay? You start on the inner side, and then you work your way to the middle, okay? And then you pick it up back on the other side. And if it's a long roof like this, you know, you're gonna have to get down on the floor, move your stool or your little bench over so you can stand on it and continue. Sometimes people split this into two paint jobs. Like if it's a big van they're doing, like I'm about to do a van soon, and I'm thinking I'm just gonna do the roof one day like get the whole thing ready for paint but just do the roof first okay because i'm also thinking of doing the roof silver to keep the van cool and then doing the body uh a green color i'm not 100 percent yet on the colors but that's what i'm planning on doing do the top first and then later on you could just mask up the top and then shoot the sides a lot easier you know it breaks breaks things down for you um and you could just break it into two paint jobs, especially if you're doing two colors, okay? Um, this bumper cover, I screwed up a little bit. Now keep in mind, this is a quick paint job, but you can see how easy single stage covers anything, all right? I'm going over raw plastic here, all right? All I did was put adhesion promoter, bulldog adhesion promoter. I just sprayed it on here lightly, okay? And then all, and then I'm just basically covering it with single stage enamel. Okay. Um, another way to have done it a little bit more correctly was to do your bulldog adhesion promoter. Okay. Put 2K filler primer on it. All right. And then sand that down, get it smooth. Okay. And then go ahead and put your single stage paint on top of it like that. Okay. Again, there's many ways to do this. Okay. There's. You know, some faster ways, okay? And then there's the correct longer way, 
Okay, and the faster ways are faster. Um, but in the end, the paint job might not last as long. It might chip later in a, in a year, two, three years from now. You know, you, you never know. It all depends on how much the person cares for the car. Because if you kept this thing in a garage, kept it waxed and cleaned, it'll last for a very, very long time. But if you keep it under a mango tree okay, for two years, like my friend did, your paint job turns to crap very, very quickly, you know, within months. Okay, bird crap goes on it eats everything up, uh, you know, tree sap, all right? It all depends on how you care for the, for the car, all right? You can see how the gun bud light system does so much. And a lot of people get screwed up with painting because they can't see. You know, you need to make sure you're seeing the gloss lay on as you paint. Now, if you see this here, it's glossy, okay? If it doesn't look glossy to you, go back and hit it again. All right, here I'm picking it up on the other side. I'm coming back now. This is the second coat of paint. We went around the whole car two times and I had a little bit of extra paint mixed up. So I actually did the hood three times. I'm spraying it on. It's coming on very, very nice here. Okay, so I'm gonna leave you alone now. Uh, we're spraying at about 26 to 27 PSI trigger pulled, okay? Uh, we have plenty of air. We got a big 80 gallon air compressor outside turbine system. So it compresses very, very quickly. Uh, and it's spraying out very nice here. Okay. You can see how the gun bud again, lights everything up. You can see how it's flown out glossy. The bottom we didn't worry about. I stopped painting at the molding because what we're going to do here is let this thing cure for about three, four days. And then we're going to lay, uh, basically lay some Raptor liner on it. And if I were to do this job again, I would have actually did the Raptor liner first, masked it up, and then shot the uh, the single stage enamel. Why? Because I did have one section on the front bumper cover where we had some chemical reaction. Like the, the Raptor liner has so much solvents in it that it was kind of peeling and bubbling my single stage on one area where I kind of loaded it on an extra thick. I didn't have problems across the whole thing, just the one area on the front bumper cover. So... If I were to do it again, I kind of would have done it opposite. I would have done the Raptor liner, let that dry for a good two, three days, then mask that up, then paint the single stage on. That's what I would have done. All right. You can see me kind of like laying it on the hood here. And this is just a second coat. I actually go over the hood and some of the lower sections, a third coat because I had some paint left over. It looks closer because of the camera shot. You know, I'm kind of like, it's shooting above it, but it's like four and a half to five and a half inches, kind of where you want to be at when you're spraying. Okay, full, full wide pan, uh, fan pattern here. We're just laying it on. You want to lay it on, it has to come on glossy. If it doesn't look glossy, don't be afraid to go back and wet it some more. You always want to make sure your line, okay, your hose is above your shoulder, behind your back, coming down behind your back, because you don't, the last thing you need is the hose hitting the fender, okay? All right, and right now I'm not using the disposable cup system, right? I have, I had it, but I was like, let me just use this because I could put much more paint in it. This is a thousand milliliter uh, paint cup. Just in case you're new watching one of our series here, it's very, very important to unmask your car I would say anywhere from two to four hours after your paint job because you want to start unmasking, especially if you're masking up your headlights and your moldings and things like that. You want to start unmasking before it's completely cured. Why? Because if it's completely cured, you really risk the chance of peeling your paint off if your masking tape is very close on certain areas. We sanded our headlights down with 800 grit and then we're just shooting two coats of clear on it. Uh, we're using the Atom X27 spray gun with the Gun Bud Ultra Lighting System. You can see how uh, it makes it so much easier to see. Here's the second coat here. Uh, my friend Tony here is just whacking it for me with some clear coat. 
and all you have to do to prep plastic lenses like this is sand it down with 800 grit and put two coats of clear on it okay and this will hold up for many many years to come here what we're doing is we're spraying our front grill with plasti dip okay now when it comes to spraying plasti dip in a can like this you don't have to actually sand the product down uh, especially if you want to peel it off okay for me i just clean this front grill down and we're just going to spray it with plasti dip to give it that flat matte look um, and then we're also going to do all the other pieces on the car uh, with plasti dip the car masked up with fine line tape followed see i'm getting very close to that fine line tape there because we need the raptor liner to stick onto something so take um, but this actually worked out really well okay so i'm not saying this way didn't work out it worked out really well it's just that sometimes when you lay uh, a paint product on very thick you know there's a lot of solvent in it and it reacts okay here we go so we're spraying the raptor liner product I get mine on eBay, um, pretty cheap, about 160 bucks for a gallon sprayable material. They give you four quarts of this uh, with a little uh, quart of hardener that you just add into the bottle and you shake it up and you on going. You can see that I, I put the gun butt light on it because it helped a ton, especially spraying under the wheel wells and under the car. So uh, yeah, here we go. We're just spraying the Raptor liner on it. And as far as coats, just spray on until it covers and until it looks even with you. You know, don't. It's sometimes it might be tricky because you just don't want to over wet it. So just keep the gun flowing, you know, um, that's the main thing. Keep the gun flowing. motorcycle tank lamp projects in VIP uh, we do have a whole section on fine line taping okay and that's how you do flame graphics or masking out for two-tone three-tone whatever that one-eighth fine line tape is a very pro popular product by 3m that we use all the time so here we're just kind of unmasking take your time slowly doesn't look like I had any fine line tape on that rear section but you can see around the fender well Again, for using, so here's the fine line tape. You can see some rough edges here, right, as I pull off, but that actually, like I said, it comes off. Um, as far as the masking tape, why am I using blue? I'm, I like to use the blue painter's tape on top of tape, like on top of fresh paint like this, because it doesn't have a great stick to it, okay? Painter's tape is, is not, doesn't have as good adhesion as like a 3M, uh, the 3M yellow tape or American tape. So when doing graphics, I don't like to use a tape that's very good. I like to use a, a mediocre tape and a good tape for that, again, is uh, the painter's tape. Well, if you're gonna be buffing over a dark color, like a dark gray, dark reds, you know, dark purples and black, you wanna go to a 3000 grit, okay? Um, we're only going to be doing the highlight areas here uh, as an example. I mean, you can see how glossy this thing is using a thousand grit to cut it quickly and then we're going to wash it down with 2000 grit. All right. Um, again, if you're a newbie yet using the DA, I would highly recommend going by hand because it's sometimes if you're in one spot too long, you can really cut through very quickly. Okay. But right here, I'm just washing it down using a thousand grit. And then we're going to go ahead and uh, switch to uh, 2000 grit wet sand and just wet sand it really good. Okay. It will buff out to a high gloss. Okay. Once that's achieved, then you use your machine glaives, step two of the perfected system and get it, you know, get all the swirl marks out and get it really to an extremely, extremely brilliant gloss. All right. So the 3M uh, rubbing compound that I'm using now is a 06085 part number, okay? And then after that, we use the 06064 glaze with a foam pad. So 
I was earlier, I was testing on to keep it moving um, at about 18, 17 to 18 to 1900 RPM at this stage. Buffing does take time. Some people say, hey, you know, I buffed and it doesn't look glossy. Well, you didn't buff enough. You got to keep buffing. Phase just to seal it up and then they last for a very long time. so we are using the glaze now it's a little it has a little like a grayish tint to this you can see okay it's not white okay so this is the 06064 3m perfected system glaze step two I have it in text right there and you can see that I'm using a black foam pad okay and you want to use the black pad with this it's the finest and um, it will help you get this product on and get a very very high gloss I looked at the Ford Raptor. I was like, hey, I can use that. So we basically ordered the Ford F-150 Raptor decal kit. It was like $58 and change, very affordable. And I just sliced it and pieced it. I was like, hey, maybe we can use this section for the front part, this section for the back. And we just custom, you know, custom installed it. Everywhere we go with this CRV now, like we're getting so many looks. Everybody's like, that's a cool CRV, you know, like, whoa, that thing is awesome. Especially with the Jurassic Park theme, uh, learn auto body and paint VIP, you know, that just puts it over the top. We have four series, the, it's an old paint job, but that really takes you through A to Z. Um, uh, there's a ton of other projects in the course that you can learn from. Um, thank you to Adam X Spray Guns. They are awesome, amazing. They're the only spray guns we spray with right now. Super affordable, uh, great quality, great atomization, great spraying spray guns. So if you guys are looking for uh, a second gun, a first gun, a third gun, whatever, I highly encourage you to check out the Adam X27 and the X88. Those are very, very good spray guns. The X20 is more of a primer gun. Um, and it's, it's a good DIY all around gun, but if you're looking for a good primer gun, that's a good primer gun. Um, and also getting a, a 2.0, a 1.8 to a 2.0 tip kit for that will really put that filler primer on really nice for you. Mm -hmm. 